breaking down. In this book, we ask far more controversial questions. We're talking about race. I mean, what's the most controversial thing you ask about race? Uh, well, one of the things we study is a black-white test score gap. It's exactly the parallel. Why is there a black-white test score gap? Well, what's interesting is, in this book, the research I did with Roland Fryer at Harvard, what we show is that if you just control for a handful of, of variables, when black children show up in the first year of school, in kindergarten, they actually test as well as white students. And this is a result, in, in, in all of the testing that's ever been done of achievement of black and white students in the United States, is my to my belief, there's never been a case where you could you get rid of this black-white test score gap. And so we show it early in life, really, if, you, if all you knew about a child were a few background characteristics, like their income, the education of their parents, you wouldn't be able to, knowing whether they're black and white would tell you nothing about their test scores. Now, what's interesting in the data is three years later, these big gaps emerge. So why? Well, we don't know why. It's, it's, a, it's a hard question. And Damn, that's something we ought to find out quickly. We're trying. Think? We're trying, and we, we put everything we could into it, and we don't understand it. I mean, we can rule out a lot of things. Well, give me one possible explanation. Well, Roland Fryer has a few, you know, Roland, Ro say? Roland says that... That's good. They're there again. He knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, you know, Roland thinks the acting weight phenomenon is very real and very... The, the acting weight phenomenon is very significant and very damaging, which is that if, you know, depend every school, depending on the racial composition, it differs in magnitude, but that black kids in a school will often be discouraged from accomplishing in the same way that white kids are encouraged to accomplish. It's that simple, that they're, that they're, that they're discouraged and brought down by their peer group. Now, that's a very controversial finding in itself, but he feels that, that you know, he's written separate papers on that, both theoretical papers and empirical papers, and, and makes the argument. He has this amazing, you should have him, uh, he's an amazing scholar. He has a, a, a new paper out that shows the, um, the, the friendship index that, that shows that um, black kids in American schools, when they, the higher they score on their tests, at, at a certain point, they, they start to lose friends after they, 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 they get up on the mm -hmm. axis. White kids, no impact. So again, it's a tough topic to talk about wisely, but econ is something that, you know, and a lot of people complain that economists are cold-hearted, and I think that's probably what Larry Summers' greatest sin was, was talking in the language of economists, because right. when Gary Becker was talking 30 years ago about the margin of the utility of having another child in your family, people from outside the econ community freaked, you know, it's a, it's a very strange kind of language to hear if you're not accustomed to it.